What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of The Oli Cannoli Show. Today, we had Denzel Giraldo, and it was an incredible conversation with such a brilliant young man. I met him at a tech entrepreneurship event, and he gave me a little bit of advice and insight, and then we decided to hop on a podcast. We talked about business and adding God into the mix and making sure that you hold faith deep and close to your heart, because when things get hard, you're relying back on God. And be ready for some really fun conversations and some unpopular opinions and an amazing quote. So here it is. I hope you enjoy. So Denzel, what are you passionate about? I'm passionate about martial arts. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's just every single aspect of it and how it correlates to business. It's like when you're doing, for example, I do karate. Mm -hmm. I do Ishinro karate. And it's like when you're doing a kata, every single detail of it matters a lot. And it, it correlates in the same way to business. For example, if you're in your business and you're developing a system, mm -hmm. the way you develop that system, even the little, 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 little detail, it's going to impact whether that system can scale, how many people can do it, how much your business can ca can scale, depending on the amount of clients that you receive for that system, and et cetera. And it's like with karate, sometimes I'm, 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 I'm even doing a footstep. And just because that footstep, I didn't do it correctly. My yeah. sensei is like, no, <laughs> <laughs> you got to do it correctly. This is the way that you got to do it. And, and it's like, I am extremely passionate about the art of of the discipline and 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 just the discipline that karate brings you it's so amazing because it's like before I wasn't the type of person that I was able to like focus a hundred percent in one thing now because of martial arts and the, and the trajectory that it brings me it's like I am the type of person that if I don't finish something correctly, I do not stop. And I yeah. cannot stop myself. <laughs> no, I love that. And it's, it's really cool because even like with like sports, I played soccer and stuff yeah. growing up. And I always loved it. But the hardest part was learning the discipline aspect of it. Yeah. Where it's if you're not running every day, you're training your conditioning and training the technical touches on the ball. Thousands of touches every hour then yeah. you're not going to get better. Yeah. And even the little things, I remember I had a coach say, oh, you think this is boring? Yeah, but this boring drill we're doing, that's what's going to make you great. Yeah. That's what's going to make you excellent and better than everyone else. Yeah. So it's so cool to see like in sports, martial arts, it's, it's almost like a dance. It's almost like an art, but everything is that way. Everything goes together. For example, in martial arts, as you mentioned, you got to do it thousands of times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the first time you're going to suck at it. Mm -hmm. But then after the next time and the next time and the next time, it's like, you just get your body just gets so adapted to it and it's like so subconsciously naturally to you mm -hmm. that it's like you don't even think about it anymore for example you can make a move and then you, you're like oh how, how how did i do it yeah <laughs> and that's 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 uh, that's something as well that it that is really good about martial arts that the repetition is what is what makes you a master and for example, the, the same also applies to business. Mm. After you have been in the same type of meeting so many times, it's like the words just come out of your mouth the, the right way. <laughs> yeah, it's like you've been, it's like you've been here before. So because you've yeah. been there before, it's not hard to do that thing needs to get done. Yeah. Oh, how many times have you done public speaking? How many times you went on stage and talked about your company? How many times have you had a meeting where you had to lead a team? How many yeah. times have you done it? Oh, you've done it a hundred times. Then the hundred and first time you're going to be better. Hundred and fiftieth time, thousand times will be better so it's, you always get a little bit better every time even if you don't feel it or notice it yeah and it's it's crazy because some people they they like to just be be great from the first start yeah <laughs> the the magic of everything it's just focusing on making mistakes the more mistakes you do the better you're going to be on the long term so i rather just make 20 mistakes 100 mistakes from the start than just make no, make no mistake <laughs> yeah. and then make all of the mistakes at the end because that those 20, 100,000 mistakes that I'm going to make, those are going to be learning experiences for the things that I'm going to be doing in the, for the same thing that I'm going to be doing in the future. I'm going to, they say that there's a certain amount of hours that you have to dedicate to something mm -hmm. to be able to be a master at it. 10,000, so right? Yeah. 10,000 hours. I, I think so. I am not Roughly, sure. <laughs> yeah. I read a book, I read a book recently that explained that it was, it was Malcolm Gladwell's Outliers and he said 10,000 hours is your master at whatever it is you want to do yeah. in life. For example, with coding, I started coding when I was 11 years old and man, when I first started coding, it, it was such an amazing experience. Just the fact that I could create something and it was I, it was me creating it. it. It was like I just fell in love with it. 
And just just to give you a little background, mm -hmm. uh, I come from the Dominican Republic, right? Okay. And the way that I got into coding was because, so in the Dominican Republic, you know, sometimes you don't have as many resources yeah. to be able to pay, for example, for an online service. Mm -hmm. And at, at that age, I, I was 11 years old. I was playing this game, which I'm not going to uh, disclose the name. Mm -hmm. But in that game, you had to pay in order for you to get more benefits. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hmm. I don't have money. <laughs> yeah. So what is the best way that I can get benefits in this game without having to pay? Yeah. I was in this rabbit hole of doing so much research online, and then I found coding. And I was like, wait, I can create my own version of this game, mm -hmm. and I, I do not have to pay. <laughs> yeah. and then people have to pay me. And then that's that's when I started coding, and I just, I just fell in love with it. Just every single detail, just that... In the devil is on the details, like like they say. For example, in coding, if you if you, if you just miss a little dot, mm -hmm. that little dot is going to influence the whole code base because nothing is going to work at yeah. all. It won't even run. <laughs> it, it wouldn't even run. So it's like that same level of detail I apply to this, to every single piece of my life: martial arts, coding, business, and everything correlates with each other. Everything that I'm doing correlates with each other. Mm -hmm. And maybe there are some areas of the world that it doesn't. It doesn't. But at least for what I focus on, it works. And yeah, I love it. <laughs> yeah, and it's cool because you don't you don't have to be amazing at everything in this world. Yeah, we can't be perfect at everything. But yeah. you could find things that you like doing and excel at those things. And then when you excel at those things. Then you can do and learn other things, but you don't need everything. You just need yeah. a couple of things to then make you successful or make you feel like I'm happy and content with the things that I do in my life. And I think it's sometimes people think, oh, I have to try everything. If I don't do everything, then then what am I going to do? But it's like, no, no, no. Know who you are. Do what you like, and that's all you need to do. <laughs> well, yeah, you, you can do what you like, but sometimes there are people that are passionate about something and they don't find a way to monetize it for example yeah and that's something that i that i say to people like if you don't find anything that you like just learn a skill mm -hmm. throughout the time that you're on uh, learning that skill maybe you fall in love with it because yeah. from the first moment you think of coding oh that sounds hard yeah <laughs> you wouldn't even get to it but if you try it and really put hours and hours into it maybe it grows on you maybe it doesn't but mm -hmm. at the end of the day you're learning a skill you're you're becoming more valuable into the marketplace mm -hmm. and that's what matters yeah no i like that and when you said you started coding when you were 11, when did you, and you were in the Dominican Republic when you were 11, yes, when did right. you immigrate to the United States? Yes, so I immigrated to the United States in 2018 when I was 15 years old. And uh, man, I, it was such an incredible experience. When I, when I first got into that plane, it was like, oh man, so many opportunities to come. Yeah. <laughs> I was so excited because it's like, uh, even in the, in the movies, Whenever you think of the of the United States, it's like opportunity, growth. Yeah, business. the American dream. <laughs> yes, and and it's crazy because since I was like twelve years old, I said to myself, you know what? One day I'm gonna start a company, and it makes me so proud nowadays that I am able to fulfill that dream that I always had since I was a kid. And uh, yeah, I, I love the United States because of that. It's, it's yeah. the land of the dreams, right? Yeah, <laughs> especially when you allow yourself to work hard, you know. And yeah. it's so funny because uh, being Egyptian and being an immigrant as well, like when we came to America and then I see how hard my dad is working. I see how hard yeah. the, the, the system is making you work because if you allow yourself to take chance with the opportunities, yeah. you will be successful. Yeah. But a lot of times people think like, oh, man, like I don't have nothing going for me right now or this. But I'm like, dude, you're in America right now. There's yeah. opportunity left and right <laughs> if you're willing to work for it. If you And like the thing is, it's true. You know, hard work pays off. You just have to be able to, like you said, find a skill, find things you like doing, monetize it, and then... You, who knows? Like you said, you might fall in love with it. Yeah, exactly. And uh, as you, something that you mentioned that really shocked me, it was this America, this is the land of the dream. But sometimes people say, oh, I, I don't have nothing going on for myself. It's like everything in this world is a self-fulfilling promise. It's like faith. Mm -hmm. If you have faith in something that it's going to be true, that's how life is going to react to you. So, and some people believe in the law of attraction. I believe in God. Yeah. But and I believe, for example, if I desire something with the bottom of my heart, if and I put the effort into it, God is going to provide. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> for example, the people that believe in the law of attraction, it's like if you truly desire something, 
and you put all of your hard work into it, you are, you're going to accomplish it because there's no such thing as failing when you don't give up. Mm-hmm. The moment you give up, that's when you start failing. Yeah, so I, as I was saying, I believe in God, and if I put the effort, that is going to provide for me. Mm-hmm. And some people, they're, they're like, oh, I don't have anything going on for myself. And it's like, this is the land of the dreams. If you put your effort 100% into something, you're going to succeed at it. And whatever you think about, the way you think about stuff, it's, it's what you're going to track. So, for example, when I, when, I, when I first opened the business, I had so many doubts in my mind. Oh, I'm not going to accomplish it. Maybe not. Maybe yes. Oh. But you know what? I had to... I had to do so many tricks for me to be able to for me to be able to trick myself into thinking that it's actually true. I recorded myself giving my, giving myself motivational <laughs> speeches. Oh, then so you're the motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna do it. <laughs> and it's like, just it doesn't matter how, from from where you come. As long as you put the effort, you're going to succeed at it. For example, I come from nothing mm-hmm. in the Dominican Republic. I saw my mother, my dad struggling and not having money to pay the bills, money to, 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 to buy maybe food. And it was like just me seeing that as a kid. And, and then I, I discovered coding, as I was saying. And that skill, I saw it as an opportunity to be able to push my family forward and, and, and to be able to provide resources for my family, for me, and to really build an empire because as i told you it was it was always a dream for me to to build an empire and to build a company and to and to be able to make impact on people's life and and thank god that i am able to accomplish no that's awesome i love that story too because it's like the diamond in the rough you know it's like the rose that grew from the concrete you know it's like it happens but it requires again someone to do it it requires someone to do the hard work that leg work you know where you, you push through with your family you get them to the next step and even when i go back home in egypt and see like again right now like the society in egypt how expensive everything is for the average egyptian to buy things but then i'm privileged enough to be in america where when i go to egypt i can be like oh i'm living like a king when i go to egypt i can spend (laughs) my dollars right and get eat whatever i want and spend however i want and not think about it but then i think but that's because i'm in america with the opportunity so when i go back make sure i'm also donating make sure i'm giving back to the people make sure i'm trying to help people as well because if you're not doing that then what's the purpose of then having money right money isn't yeah. the purpose like you said not one moment did you say it was about the money but it was about helping your mother and father helping them be able to sustain their life to be able to it was a dream to build something telling yourself denzel i'm gonna build the company i'm gonna do it right it's <laughs> it's having purpose and i yeah. think a lot of the times when i talk to people about business or we're kind of going back and forth they always say what like the, what they want but i'm like okay why What is the reason why you want that? Is it because you want a million dollars or is it because you want impact? Do you want to change someone's life or do you want just to change the car you're driving or you just want to change the house you're living in? It's like, why do you want that thing? And I think when people figure out their why and their purpose, and again, having God in your life, that really helps because when you have God, you realize it's not just manifestation of, oh, it'll come to me because I am this. (laughs) No, it's because you want that. You're desiring that. But like you said, God will provide when yeah. you work hard. And my mom always tells me this. She's like, oh, like, you pray to God and ask for things. But make sure yeah. you're also working for that thing. Yeah. Because you can't say, oh, God, please help me pass this test. Oh, Lord, please help me pass this test. But then you're saying. <laughs> and then not study. And then you're not studying. <laughs> okay, you're going to fail, you know? Like, so I love, I love that you have, again, like that God-fearing man instilled in you to, again, be able to build your company, to be able to build a business. And yeah. Live the American dream. I say it every time. Nowadays, if I didn't have God in my life, I wouldn't be able to do any, any of those of, of these things. Because when you're going through the hardest part of business, that's when you need God the most. And, and if, faith. And, and when you're going through the better better part of business, that's when you need God the most. <laughs> and you're like, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. I love yeah. you so much. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, as, you, as you said, finding the why, the bigger why, it's, it's the, the reason why you choose to be disciplined about it. Because if you don't have a big enough why, you're going to be give up at some point because you're like, oh, screw this. I, I don't have to do this. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter. But when you have that why, it's like that drive never disappears. Whenever you, you're at the lowest point of your life, you're like, okay, I have my why. I cannot stop this because if I stop, then things are not going to happen. My mm-hmm. family is not going to move forward. Business, the, the, I'm not going to make the impact that I want to make in, in, in this life. And just 
discipline it's it's a matter of just sacrificing today the things that you want today for the things that you really want in the future so yeah. i am willing to give up five 20, 10 20 years of my life just to just to be able to accomplish that thing that i have set for my future and that's that's uh it's it's a beautiful thing yeah no i love that and i love again it's nice to talk to people who again have that god fearing because I, I always tell people the same thing i'm like if i didn't have like god in my life i would have quit a while ago the things that i went through in the last couple of years of my life i would have lost my mind <laughs> i would have i would have went yeah. crazy I, I, the trauma and all this stuff and the struggle or looking at your bank account and thinking every time i make money i'm putting it back in the business every time i make money i'm putting it back in the business everyone's like yeah. oh so how'd you do it i'm like bro oh, god like i tell them like i couldn't i couldn't have done this without like without yeah. having faith and people always say like okay so say you have don't have god right and you just are just doing things i'm like this is what happens when you have nothing to fall back on with faith, then how, what's holding you? Like, what's keeping you, s like, solid? Yeah. Like, what's your foundation? I think having yeah. God and fearing God and thanking God for any bit of gratitude and blessing, that's how you get more. And in, in the Quran, it says, certainly, if you're, great, if you're, at, like you're grateful, you get increased. And yeah. it says, certainly, you will be increased. Not like, yeah. maybe. No, certainly, you'll get increased. Yeah. And if not in this life, then the next. And I think that's, like, a really beautiful thing where it's, like, this isn't the end goal. You know, it's like the goal is to do as much good as we can in this world, but we also understand there's an afterlife. So it's like yeah. you work for the afterlife. And my dad always tells me, he's like, when you turn your back on the world, right, the temptations, all the things around you, right, the, the bright colors. Yeah. When you turn your back on all that and just focus on your purpose and God, watch how the world comes to you. And I've noticed that in my life where I've stopped looking at the mean, the meantime, right, the little things now, the little temptations, and just focus on what can I do big? Yeah, and I've noticed how it's starting to come to me now, and I'm like, okay, nice. But it takes patience, years of patience, not just okay. I'm gonna do six months, and I'm gonna go really hard for six months. Okay, but after six months, when nothing happens for you, then what? Right? Just keep going. You know, but, <laughs> but then most people quit. Most, you know what I mean? Most pe most people quit. That's why most people are not successful, and mm -hmm. and it's it's the sad the saddest part because it's like if you already put so much effort into it, it's like you you go through a marathon. And you're already in, in in mile 10, 11, 16. Yeah. You're like, are you going to go back and <laughs> undo all of the effort that you just put in? No, just complete the marathon. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, as you as you as you mentioned, um, having God in in your life, and also most importantly as well, it's like giving back as well. If you if you if you are making money, for example. The, the most important part is giving back to people, giving back to churches, giving back to the poor. Exactly. Because if you if you make all this money and you just don't give it away, why is God supposed to bless you? Mm -hmm. Why? For what reason? So, but if you, if you if you are always getting money and you are always blessing people and blessing lives and and changing people's life, God is going to say, okay, here's here's my son, and my son is doing great things for other people. He I, let me give him more so that he can continue doing that. Mm -hmm. But if you don't do that, how do you expect God to keep blessing you and and to keep bringing blessing to your lives? Yeah, yeah. And uh, at the beginning, it's like. You 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 mentioned it yourself that every every single money that you had you put it back into the business. We put it back to, into the business, but we also have to give back as well. And and people at the when when we're starting the companies and, and we we're, we're like in the process of of making it grow. You're making maybe a, a bunch of money or whatever, and then people are like, "Okay, I see Denzel, but he he has he makes money, but he doesn't reflect on himself because." They they think that the money is just a reflection on what you invest in yourself, but mm -hmm. it's a, it's a reflection on what you invest in other people in yeah. your business and keep 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 investing it back into the business. So, I I look I look up to Elon Musk because of because of this reason. I I I, I recently read, read read his biography and it was so interesting the way that he thinks about business. His lens is so different. You know you know how how crazy he is. He goes and. He he sells PayPal. Mm -hmm. All of the money he put it back to SpaceX and Tesla. He could have just invested in one or keep all the money to himself. No, he decided to just put it everything back into the business, into new businesses, yeah. ventures. Yeah, and then when SpaceX was at its lowest point, they they already 
uh, uh, exploded one spaceship, two spaceships, mm -hmm. three spaceships. At the third, he, he was saying the third is going to be the last one. No more after this. Mm -hmm. It failed. You know what happened? He started raising money back again to be able to do it again. And then he, he said, okay, this is going to be the last one. And he burned all the breaches, all, the, all of the opportunities that he has. And he put it in this, just that single one thing. And guess what? At the end of the day, they got into orbit. And mm. it's, it's such a great reflection because we think about, okay, we're doing business, we're taking risks, whatever. But look, he was sending, <laughs> he was sending <laughs> objects into the orbit. And if you think about it, just risking everything for something that might not be possible because we're humans. You, you, you're born in this world, and you, you might not think to yourself, oh, one day I'm going to launch, <laughs> launch yeah. rockets into the, into the sky. But he believed to himself that it was possible. Yeah. He put every single, every single penny that he had into it, and he sacrificed the most into it. And that's why you get rewarded in business, because you're willing to put every single thing, every single part of you, and every, and every single... You, you're willing to invest the most into it, and that's, mm -hmm. that's why you get rewarded the most as well. Absolutely. Yeah, I love that. And I was going to ask you then, what is a time that you were going and creating one of your businesses and doing your thing and where you had to rely on faith? Or what was the story in where you put so much effort behind something and you had to be patient? Or, and, like, what did you do? <sighs> so there was a time in business where I found myself with no clients no income, just thinking to myself, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> One of the things that, 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 I, that, that, that I am really grateful for is that I got the opportunity to buy my, my mom a house. Mm -hmm. And it was like at this moment of my life, I was like, there's no clients, there is no income, there is nothing going on. How am I going to pay the mortgage? Yeah. <laughs> and And it's like... In that moment, it felt like the world was coming to an end. But just just the fact that I came on my knees and I prayed to God, I was like, "Okay, I feel after I just got up after I got up from my knees, I was like, I just felt relief. I felt so much peace. But before that, I felt like the world was coming to an end. And at some point, I was thinking even even to cry and give up. And I was like, no, God didn't put me in this place to give up. God yeah. put me in this place to move forward and to and to fulfill that promise. Because as a, as a believer of God, I feel, I feel like God has a bigger purpose for me. And I have to fulfill it. If I do not become the very version of myself, I am failing God. And I do not want to fail God at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. So, you, it, again, it was almost that, like, sincere moment of a conversation with God where it's, God, like, I'm here. I'm, like, I'm like, your humble slave. You know, like, help me out. I need, I need your guidance. And that's the one thing that I le I've learned in being religious. It says when you pray to God, like, and you ask him for something, right? It's like don't ask him just for, I want a little nickel. No, ask him for the greatest, biggest thing that you want. Dream big. Like, who, like God made miracles happen, right? So what, yeah. what is it to him to have you ask God him to help you, right? But again, like you said, put the work in. Being a good person, make sure you're, you're donating already, right? It's like, oh, I'll donate when I'm when I'm rich. You know? It's, and that's such, a, that's such a, like, a backwards mentality. It's like, yeah. oh, I'll donate when I'm rich. Oh, I'll do it when I'm this. It's like, who says? Who says you like you're gonna live another day? <laughs> Who says that you're gonna do this tomorrow? Who says you know? So it's you never know when every day is your, like every day could be your last. So every day you have to do the right thing. Donate if you can. Do this if you can. Have a weekly system of giving out, giving out your time. If you don't have money, give time. Right? There's yeah. always ways to help, and I think people forget that. You know where they nowadays in our society, people only think about money. That money is the only metric, but money is not the only metric. Our time is a metric. The relationships we have are a metric. And again, that's really interesting that you said, like, you went back to God and you were like, help me out, you know, because it's not just for you, but for your family. And you, again, having that purpose. And I love to hear that from someone else as well. So there is this thing that they say, if you uh, mentioning, uh, talking about, for example, the, the goals that you have to set for yourself, if you, you want your goals to be big enough, that when you mention it out loud, people think you're delusional. Mm -hmm. Because the, here's the thing. Subconsciously, when you focus on a goal and you set yourself this maybe small, maybe medium, maybe large goal, 
you're going to put the effort into getting that goal. So whatever, whatever obstacles you're going to have are going to have to be into that goal. So if you, if you set your, if you set yourself a goal, make your goal 10 times bigger. So that way your, your vision is 10 times bigger and the obstacles that, that, that are going to come are going to be for that 10 times bigger goal. Mm-hmm. For example, if, if you, if you set yourself, for example, to, to make <clears throat> maybe 50,000, a hundred thousand a month and set yourself to make 500,000 a month <laughs> yeah. because you're just, you're so conscious your subconscious will think, okay, maybe a hundred thousand is not too much. Maybe five hundred thousand is the goal. Okay, so now you're going to act. Accor- your subconscious is going to act accordingly every single day of your life in order for you to be at that level. And then these little obstacles that you're going to to have are going to be like, okay, this this is not it. The the, the angle is that one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, it's and I I I I heard in a podcast that. Whenever you set yourself bigger goals, because obtaining the initial goal that you set for yourself, it's going to be easier. Mm-hmm. And I love that because, again, for me, again, like having a, a, a voice social media platform, right? And then everyone's looking at me like, all right, like, what about all these other apps? What about this app? What about that app? I'm like, get. I'm, I'm like, okay, okay, okay. But then I tell them, like, how many apps do you have in your phone? Right? I'll, I'll be like, oh, how many songs do you listen to? How many times is there a new artist? How many times is there a new this, a new that? People always use it, right? There's just no, un- the saturation is never there. As long as something is good, someone will use it. As long as there's a reason why you built it, someone will enjoy it. And I think people who don't believe in themselves enough to try that crazy thing. And I came up with the idea in 2019. And when I came up with the idea, I didn't think I'm going to use this and make money. I didn't care about that. All I said to myself was, I want to use this thing. It doesn't exist. Let me create it. I don't even know how to code. I don't know how to create it. I don't know anything about how to make an app. So let yeah. me text people and contact people that might know. Yeah, That's it. It, just, it started with a little bit of curiosity. A tiny bit of curiosity led to this rabbit hole of four years later. I'm, um, again, pitching at events. I'm talking to people about it. I'm believing in it so hard. And in the beginning, it was so easy to believe in it. And yeah. like, oh, I'm going to make money. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. <laughs> but then when it got hard two years yeah. later, three years later, when money hasn't come yet, I haven't finished development yet. I haven't finished this yet. This stuff's happening in the background, but no one knows. Oh, but how am I going to get there if I don't have money? I don't have money. I don't have money yet. But then that's anxiety, right? You're not yeah. supposed to live in that fear, right? Again, just trust the plan, do what needs to get done, and then it'll come. And I think that's the hardest part of business is when you are, aren't are seeing the fruits of your labor yet. But they say that when you plant a tree, does it give you fruit the first year? <laughs> no. You know what I mean? Yeah. It comes later when you allow the tree to grow. Spread roots, then it grows. So people don't realize you have to grow. And then before it, it to grow, you have to be the person ready to receive the blessing. Like you're not going to receive a blessing if you're not ready to receive it. You're not going to learn the lesson if you're not ready to understand the lesson. So, yes. again, it's those little moments in life where it's like learning how to do that makes you more successful. It's like, oh, how did you make, end up making money? It wasn't ever about the money. It was about me being a better person. Yes. And and, and I love that you that you bring up that, that conversation because as I, the story that I was telling you when I was at my hardest point of my life, I was like, wait there's an exit <laughs> yeah but if i didn't go through that i wouldn't have the the tenacity to be able to go through the challenges that i go nowadays that was like a preparation like here my son i'm gonna put you to this struggle so that you prepare yourself and that you become a strong man because it's like if you pray to god god made me stronger mm-hmm. what do you expect <laughs> him to do yeah. To just give you flowers? <laughs> no. He's going to put you through struggle. Mm-hmm. And if I pray to God, I want to be stronger. He put me through the these challenges so that I become the person that deserves that dream that I have. Mm-hmm. And if I don't go through this, it's like, w- which success story is interesting that never went through any struggle? Yeah, you're right. What, what, which one makes the best movie? Which one makes the most movie? Mm-hmm. <laughs> which one do you want to hear? The one that it just it went perfectly. Or the one that I, that it was like that you can relate to, mm-hmm. because you already you you also went through the same struggles in your life. Maybe you're experiencing the same. Maybe you're hearing about how that person bec- overcomes their struggle. And when the, it, your moment comes, you take that person's experience as an example, and you're like, oh, he went through worse. 
I can go through it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. And it's, and it's inspiration. Yes. You get inspired from other yeah. people's stories. So then why can't your story be the movie? Yeah. Why can't your story be the one that I made it out? Or why yeah. can't you do it? But you have to believe in yourself. You right? Did the main character in the movie believe in themselves? They had to, <laughs> they had to right? They had to do yeah. the thing. And that's why you love the story. And they call it the hero's journey yeah. where they fall into the abyss. Like, you know, it, first it starts really good. And then they, they're, then they start the journey. And then when they're in the journey, now they're in the abyss, right? The abyss are in this lowest point. But what, when they come back up from that abyss, that's when it's, that, all that starts. But sometimes that way up might be the longest part of the movie, right? Sometimes the longest part of the movie is that. And those yeah. are the best movies. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and it's really interesting because people only focus on the result. Yeah. As you mentioned, the longest part of the movie is the best one. Mm-hmm. But the shortest one is where they, they went through the struggle. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you see these movies that it's like two hours movie, two hour movies. And most of the movies is like the good things. Mm-hmm. And then 10 minutes of it, the bad things. Mm-hmm. But maybe in that actor's lifetime, that took one, two, three, five years of their life going through struggle. And people only remember five to ten minutes of, of yeah <laughs> yeah exactly for that and it's like people only focus on the angle for example once you make it boys ball box be- becomes the next app they're gonna be like oh ali it's successful he's he 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 he, he overcame everything and he he didn't hit oh, oh no 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 He's so lucky. Look, he's successful. He has a <laughs> bunch of money. He's so lucky. And they don't know how much effort you put into it. They mm-hmm. don't know how much you sacrificed. Mm-hmm. How many times you went through, uh, how do I say? How do I say um, the abyss, like the struggle, or how how many times you went through 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 the he- through hell? Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. In order for you to be in the position that you are nowadays, but it's that's the thing. People don't care about where you come from they they see you today they take so many assumptions they they like oh ali he's so lucky whatever but they don't know how many times you was crying on your knees to god mm-hmm. and saying god please help me yeah <laughs> and people also like you said they a lot of people sometimes even something i've noticed with like social media or like when i post podcasts i post youtube videos i do, I do it because i love doing it. i genuinely enjoy talking to people informing people of different stories different backgrounds like denzel your story people almost gonna be like wow i didn't know that was through how half in his life wow that's such a inspire inspiration to my life ah, i'm gonna use that story to give me motivation and someone will ask me and be like oh so what's the point right you don't have millions upon millions of millions of followers right away oh you didn't go viral right away then what's the point i'm like it's not about views right now it's about the conversations we're having it's about building it all right it's doing the right thing the right way and sometimes people think oh but but what's the result all that matters is the result i'm like the result doesn't have to happen in the exact moment you do something right when like you said when they go to the you know the sports movies or they go into the training montage, like you yeah. said, it's like it's two seconds, right? Yeah, they're tra- It's like they're only training for a minute. But really, <laughs> how long are they training? Months and months yeah. and months. When Usain Bolt runs the Olympics to break the world record, it was nine point what, five six seconds, right? Those nine point five six seconds, like the world record of the hundred meter sprint. How many years of preparation? Did did he, did, it, wasn't just, it wasn't just nine seconds, ten seconds of running, right? It was years of running, throwing up after a run because he's going so hard. Sprints in the hottest conditions, right? Being in Jamaica, like again, living the life he was living at when he was younger, right? And people don't realize it took so long to get to that level. Even the best athletes in the world, like Ronaldo was, what, what was he doing? Sweeping the streets in Portugal, in Madeira. What was uh, Gabriel Jesus? There was a really cool photo of him. He's a Brazilian player, right? Yeah. He was uh, sweeping. The 2014 World Cup, he was sweeping the streets. But then the next World Cup, he's playing in it. <laughs> right? Like, imagine how amazing that is, right? Like, imagine the next World Cup, he's getting a call up. What? You know? And... and- I want to ask you a question. Mm-hmm. How many times did voice books came into your mind mm-hmm. before you decided to do it? It's interesting because um, the year that it came to me, 2019, was the year that I would say my life changed when I studied abroad in England in the winter, so January to May. And I was in my journal writing business ideas after business idea after business idea because I kept thinking, okay, I want to do something with my life. This is when it clicked. Like my life changed. I was like, I want to be a better man. I need God-oriented. Focus on what I need to do. 
And over the summer, when I went to Egypt, I was in airplanes with my brother. We were writing down in my journal, business ideas, business ideas. Took maybe like hundreds of ideas, hundreds of ideas. And then one day at school, November 6, 2019, I'm just sitting there using an uh, application on my phone. And I'm like, is there an app that just has voice memos that we can talk to people? It's also social and it's fun and looks new. Wait, it doesn't exist? Huh. I started like drawing it out in my journal and I just looked at it. And like, you know, when you look at something, it, it felt like it was glowing off yeah. the page like it looked yeah. like it was in my head it looked like it was glowing off the page and i was like this is it this is the one i'm gonna, I'm gonna go for and at that moment i knew that that was what i was gonna do that was what i was gonna put my effort in behind and i noticed things started pushing me towards it you know like things yes. kept pushing me towards <laughs> it in, the, in weird ways where then someone's like oh next semester there's gonna be this uh opportunity to pitch it at, at school okay i'll apply for it okay i got accepted cool um, now I got to design it. And then over the winter, I contacted some uh, developers in the area, some groups and stuff. How much would it cost? Oh, this much. How much would it cost? Oh, this much. What do I have to do this? Sign an NDA. I'm like, oh, I signed my first NDA? Ooh, <laughs> I felt so official. Right? I'm, I'm like, this is cool. And then, again, fast forward, it took, then coronavirus happened. Yeah. So pandemic happened, and I had went home from school, March 2020. So think about that. Then now, I'm like, okay, so the last three months of my life, what am I going to do? Be at home, do nothing, and then everyone's home. And then I see an app called Clubhouse came out, and it yeah. was a, a, like an audio feature thing. Yes. But they didn't succeed because it was Silicon Valley. They didn't really create it with people in mind. They created it with money in mind, profits yeah. in mind. Because they have all the money in art research and development to be like, okay, what's really popular? What's going to be the next thing? Okay, this. Let's build an app real quick and launch it. Now see what happens. Yeah. They don't care if we lose a billion dollars. We're all rich. Who cares? Let's just build it, see if it sticks, if it doesn't, whatever. But they're not building it with heart. They're not building it with purpose like yeah. we were talking about. So it didn't succeed. And that's yeah. okay. You know, some things go up, some things don't. And you learn from their mistakes. And I think in the turn, it was funny because I had the idea before it launched. Yeah. How I would have never known an app like that was going to launch. I knew that in 2019. I wrote it down. And I knew that's what I wanted to do. But then did that discourage me? Did that fuel my fire? You know what I mean? And I think that's how you know. It's like that was a moment. I was like, here it is, you know, and then I, and then things kept <laughs> happening. I met, a, I met the developer that I ended up working with, called me on the phone. We ended up talking. I put my first down payment down with the last money in my bank account. Yeah. And then all summer I was working as a pizza delivery boy, working as an Amazon warehouse worker. I'm working, again, finance and biology degree, just graduated college. And now I'm working what? Jobs that I could have done out of high school. Yeah. But it wasn't, the point wasn't a career at that point. The point was get money. Find the fastest way to make money to support this dream of yours. And I'm young. I'm living at home. Coronavirus is happening. We're already home anyways. Might as well. I think that was like when I knew that it was like the right time, you know? So that's why I just dove into it. And then here we are today, right? Four years later, still doing the same thing, doing what I can to again, keep funneling money into the platform, building it, getting it, uh, you know, stealth mode, right? They call it stealth mode. Like when you're bootstrapping it and you're kind of not showing everyone what it looks like until one day, boom, it launches. But then... Oh, it was four years of making connections. It was four years of finding people to help me. Four years of communicating and being a social butterfly and meeting people that can help me later on. But four years of that where I'm not posting about it every day. I'm not telling people what I'm doing every day. But you just keep doing it until one day it all pays off. And it's it's so interesting that you mentioned that. That you was you was a pizza delivery boy mm -hmm. and all and, and, and working at, at an Amazon warehouse. It's like every success story has its sacrifices. And when I first came to the to, to the United States from the Dominican Republic, I was like, I had this idea in my mind that it was it was, it was an app that it was not gonna succeed, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was a, a learning experience that I got from God, and that was a blessing. That it teach it teach me so many lessons on what not to do in an app in order for it to what to do in an app in order for it to scale, and what not to do <laughs> in order for it to fail. Yeah. And so that was that was my 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 first venture, and that was at 15 years old, and. I was I was always praying to God. God, give me a job. God, give me a job. I want to invest in this app. I want to invest in this app. And one day, someone at church came up to me and said to myself, "Oh, you want to work? Come work at my barber shop." I was like, "Oh, are you serious? I want to work." <laughs> <laughs> so then I go work at a barber shop, and every, every day I was learning, 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 learning t until I, I got to to finally cut hair. When I got into cutting hair, it was like I was cutting hair all the time. And when I didn't have a client, I was sitting down in my computer coding, 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 coding. Maybe my ideas. And how Maybe, old were you? How old were you at the time? I, I was 15. Okay. 
maybe my ideas, maybe one client's ideas, because at that time I was still like freelancing, doing this and this and that. And that helped me develop my skills so great that it, it, it paid off today. That, that sacrifice that I went through, it paid off today because being in the barbershop, I recognized this problem. The barbershops are still today counting and tickets one by one, doing everything, reading down on paper. And it's cash. It's a cash business. <laughs> yes, it's a cash business. They're, they're, they're paying with cash. They're writing down the price of the haircut that they did. They put it all together in a, in a, in a little box. And I'm like, why are we doing this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this idea came into my mind. I was like, I'm going to start developing this. A system, because at the end of the day, the barber, the barbershop owner had to, after a busy day, maybe hundreds of, of, of haircuts were made. And per client and, and per and person. And per, per client, per person, they had to count every single one of those pieces of papers and then calculate commissions of it. And if you make one mistake, if you forgot one client, Someone's you mad. have to check the <laughs> camera yeah. from the beginning to the end to make sure which client you, you, you didn't include. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I came, I, I, was, I went to my house that day and I was like, I'm going to build on that for, for this. Mm -hmm. Then I go, a couple months go by and I'm like, I go to the owner, here, this is what you're going to use. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm pitching, the, pitching him the, this idea. He was, at the beginning, he was like doffing it because, you know, people get adapted so quickly to even to the worst things of your life. If you go through it for so long, you get adapted to it. So yeah. they got, they were adapted to that system, and, and they were like, oh, no, no, no. But then I was like, try it, and you're not going to pay me. <laughs> but I just wanted to get that first testing of, yeah, of that idea. Yeah, to see how it actually works. Yeah, so then we started trying it the first week. It, there were so many errors. The date were failing. Everything was failing. I was like, "Oh my gosh, I want to make, I, I want to make this happen, but it, it's not working." Then I, I go and fix it and fix it and fix it, and in the end, it was working. I was like, "Wow, this feels so great!" But it was that was an app that was made only for that for that barbershop, and I kept selling it for different barbershops uh, at a couple thousand price. I was a 15-year-old. I, I didn't know how, how much stuff were worth worth. So then so then I go and sell it to different barbershops and uh, throughout the time I got I, I got into 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 the the career as a software engineer professionally. I was like, "Okay, I'm going to quit the barbershop. I'm going to take this 100%." And then I decided to go in, into into the software industry 100%. And throughout the time I, I I'm like I need, I need to do something. I need to do something. I cannot be just working for someone else's dreams all the time. I want I want to build something that changes people's life, that creates an impact. And and it was like the barbershop app was popping up to my mind all of the time. And I was like, hmm, nah, that's that's an app that I was I did when I was 15 years old. There's no way. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 the time passes. The time passes. And. It's still popping into my mind, and I'm like, wow. And then I, I go and, and pray to God, and I, I'm like, God, because there's something that my mom taught me, that whenever you pray to God, pray for something really specific, because God yeah. is, the, is the way that God works. If, if, you, if you just give a generic something, something very generic, maybe God doesn't take that praying seriously. And in, even in the Bible, the Quran and, and the Bible, they have so many things. So similar. many similarities. Yeah. They're both Abrahamic and, religions. Yes. And, 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 and it will say, whenever I saw, for example, Jose and all of these people praying to God, they were, they were praying for signals in a very specific way. Oh, if this is the, the woman, make her, uh, uh, offer, offer me water, for example. And I'm like, Oh, interesting. So I'm like, God, if this is really the app, make someone make a couple of people mention it to me multiple times, and then weeks go by. Oh, the app, the app, the the, the barbershop app, and I'm like, it's been years since I haven't heard from it. Okay, couple a couple of weeks go by. Oh, 
somebody else reaches out to me from a different barbershop that saw that app in another barbershop and they're like oh can you get into my barbershop i can pay you for it i'm like okay yeah. <laughs> i got, got, I got the thank you guys i got the signal now so i go into this venture and and i start developing this app and uh i got the first mvp that it was like uh for 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 a monthly subscription i was like okay so we're going to do this at a monthly subscription because at the beginning it was like you pay me one time that's it mm -hmm. no more income no more no more nothing that does it but then we The retainer is how you really build your income, net, yeah. monthly, weekly, etc., cetera, yeah. etc. Cetera. And 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 when we switch to a monthly a monthly subscription, that's that's a real business. Yeah, that's, that's a real so B two B service, and that's when Persani uh, was born. Then we created the app. We 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 are developing so many features now. We have a team that is backing up the app. Uh, we have couple a couple clients is getting some traction as well as inwell for example we have all this other software as a service uh software consulting services company and recruiting that is called inwell and uh with the money that we make at inwell we we invested in percent and and everything else because we have a vision mm -hmm. it's not just the percent the barbership management app i think about it as changing people's life Mm -hmm. We're changing how people interact with barbershops. Before, barbershops was everything paper. Now, they're going to have this system. They don't waste time doing something that is non-related to their costs. They can just focus on their business and on their costs. And now, we're introducing so many things that are going to influence the client life. We're going to automate the appointment flow. We're going to automate the way that they pay that they make payments they, we're gonna have so many pos systems that is going to go out and it's specifically with the for barbers for barbers correct and 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 connected with their clients so that way they can have a connection with their clients and also have everything centralized in one platform mm -hmm. and uh it gives me so much gratitude that i have the opportunity thank god to impacts people's life and make their life easier mm -hmm. and again it's such a like a service business you know where like barbershops are not going anywhere people love getting their hair cut you know and it's funny because for me i learned how to cut my hair over the pandemic yeah because i was like let me learn this myself because i always wanted to learn because i would watch videos i'm like i know i can do this you know and like i learned i learned how to you know line myself up i learned how to use the this blade the one the guard da, 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 da. and as i learned the skill i'm like huh I, this is so nice i yeah. I, i really enjoyed this <laughs> but then i recently went into a barber shop and i started talking to the barber i'm like hey can i get some advice about this guard it kind of it pricks me a little bit when i cut myself with it sometimes or it kind of irritates when i cut my brother's hair he's like oh you have to do this at this and he's showing me like he's showing me like you have to unscrew this way do this and get get this clipper and do this or that. i'm like okay, cool that sounds nice and it was cool because when i was talking to him i was realizing it wasn't like he was holding the information away Yeah, I'm not even like a bar real barber. I'm just yeah. Take technically, I'm potentially taking away a client or two from him, right? But he was giving me game because it's not about just that. It's about the community, right? It's about yeah. helping each other. So yeah. I've thought like just thinking about barbers and stuff like that kind of story came in my head. I was like, and again, it's, it's like you said, it's almost like a family business naturally. It's a community business, yeah. right? It's like the relationship you have with your barber, you know? Yeah, <laughs> and it's so crazy. The barbers they're so open to to giving you advice on how to cut hair. Mm -hmm. When I first got into the barbershop, I had this this barber that I am extremely grateful with him, as well as the owner, uh, Jairo Hernandez and Luis Bertre. They're, mm -hmm. they're two really amazing people that I am extremely grateful with because they were like, come, kid, sit down here. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> and it, it, was, it was such an amazing experience because it was like I was getting out of my comfort zone, which is something that I really love. Mm -hmm. Even here in this podcast, this is yeah. like my first in-person podcast, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm like over here, but I'm like okay, I'm out of my comfort zone and I'm enjoying it. And uh, thanks to Luis, I was able to sharpen my skills mm -hmm. as a barber and to be able to cut hair. If he if he wouldn't taught me, maybe I couldn't. I I, I probably couldn't even learn how to cut hair properly mm -hmm. but he he told me every single detail and and that's what i love about barbers they're really open to giving you advice on how to improve yourself and how to improve your skills even if that means that you can be their their next competition they don't care they're yeah. like oh come here come here son you're gonna learn <laughs> you, know, you know what the really cool thing is too is because it's a, a business and where 
you could only cut one person's hair at a time. Yeah. Like, you can't cut three people's hair at the same time. So they understand that the need, the need for barbers is always going to be there. The you need cut, for did you cut your own hair? Yeah. Oh, really? What do you think? Okay, you? okay. <laughs> you did You did a nice, a nice fade, though. Yeah. And, and the lineup is really yeah. nice. I, I did this haircut, like, uh, at the beginning of this week, mm -hmm. as you can see on the back. Yeah. There's, there's no lineup over there. <laughs> I cannot reach there. <laughs> yeah. I use, I literally have, like, a mirror in my, like, my bathroom. I'll be like this, and I'll be like... Like, like, oh. But again, it's it's a skill that I learned that I'm so happy yeah. I learned because again, not only did it save me money, because again, if you give sacrifices things, yeah. I like looking clean, but I have to sacrifice the money that goes into this. Yeah. So learn the skill. <laughs> no ifs, ands, or buts, right? And yeah. you just find a way. So I really think that's awesome. And I kind of wanted to ask you, like, overall, like going through all these experiences, the businesses you've opened. What's the greatest lesson you've learned so far out of the two companies you've opened and being, again, like a software engineer by day and, like, doing this thing? Like, what's, like, the greatest lesson you think you've learned? First, always trust God. Second, have the greatest work ethics in the whole industry mm -hmm. because it's going to pay off. Third, never give up. You combine all of these things, three things together – And there's nothing that can ever stop you. There's mm -hmm. nothing. No, I love that. And where do you, like, see the world going in the next five years with life? Because, again, you're passionate about people, martial arts, and, again, religion and God. Like, where do you kind of see the world going in the next, like, five years with this? The way I see the world going, and as, as you, you can see, for example, with Perseni, it's, it's involving in something that didn't have technology on it before and now it's having a lot of technology and helping people is that people are going to be more backed up with technology mm -hmm. the way you interact with life it's going to be improved though because of technology you're ha you're going to have more tools that are going to help you in your daily life in your daily routines for you to be the best version of yourself mm -hmm. maybe one or two people not use it the right way mm -hmm. but if you Take these tools, for example, this phone. Mm -hmm. Before, for you to be able to gather knowledge, you know how many things that you got to go through? The library, go the to book. the library. <laughs> maybe you're, you're in a poor zone, so you have no library. library. Yeah. And if you don't have no library, maybe you have to travel maybe miles away to be able to get one single book that is going to give you a knowledge on, on a specific topic. Yeah. Now, you want to learn coding? Go online. Mm -hmm. You want to learn business? Go online. You want to learn the, learn the art of sales? Go online. And every single piece of information, it's on your pocket. Mm -hmm. Now, in the past, people thought, oh, this is the greatest invention. and There's nothing more advanced that is going to be in the future than this. People still think the same way. How do you think 10 years from now? things will change and technology will keep impacting people's life. Yeah. I love that. And it's funny you say that because um, people don't realize, like, yes, we have all this information. Tip of a finger. Click. Now you have everything. You can search up for anything on the internet, right? But with the amount of information that is on the internet, there is also a bunch of crap on the internet, right? That'll, True. that'll waste your time. True. That'll delay you. That will take you away from your goals, right? But you, as the user of it, you decide what you do. Are you going to waste your time for 10 hours a day on the phone? Are you going to be swiping through TikToks and Instagrams and all day just swiping? Or are you going to be watching videos, learning, learning, seeing that, yeah, you can spend some time, you know, looking at some things. That's fine. I mean, hey, I'm a football fan, right? So I love watching Liverpool play because Mo Salah. I love watching like, soccer. I love watching all these different sports when the time comes. Well, I'm sitting there. I'm enjoying it. I'm watching, right? I can have, you can have fun, but it's, What are you doing in this meantime, right? Are you also building things? Are you trying to learn a new skill? Are you learning a new language? Are you doing this? There's apps that can teach you a new language within a year, two years, right? Yeah. There's so much opportunity, <laughs> like you said, to do anything. Yeah. And a really cool thing with the, the technology is I was thinking about this recently with a couple of other creatives and other like entrepreneurs that are around like in the Gen Z era, right? Where they're 25, 23, 24, and they're talking about wanting to create a business or all these things. And I tell them, You have to build something that you will use in five years, 10 years, something that you wouldn't use now. But people forget, like, the things that are popular now, yeah. they're not going to be popular in 10 years. I mean, people might not use it in five years, 10 years, three years. Who knows? 
we are the future CEOs. We are the future business leaders. We are the future senior executives. Because again, life, they get older, people pass away, right? It's kind of the circle of life. We will become the future old generation. We're all we're gonna be Gen yeah. Z. Like, get off, get off my lawn. We're gonna be those people, right? Oh, I don't, I don't like this holograms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember back in my day, and that's the, again, that's how it is, right? Where we're gonna be those people. Yeah. So, what do you want to build for the future that you believe in? Because you're gonna be the future leader of the of the world. So that's something that I started like really thinking about deeply recently. Is that Think of yourself as you're the future of the society. How are you going to build it? You have the, like I said, opportunity. Come, you're in America. Have the opportunity. And if you're not in America, you still have the internet. The internet. You can find a way. You know how I learned how to code? Mm -hmm. It was thanks to the internet. Yeah. (laughs) Doing research about how to create games and and not have to pay for it. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, as you mentioned, Every single tool has its to use, and it can be maybe used the right way or, or misused. Mm-hmm. For example, you have knives. Yeah. What can you do with a knife? You can cook. Mm-hmm. You can cut the box, yeah. <laughs> the tape on the box, uh, and you can also kill people. But it all depends on how does the person take the tool to use it. You mm-hmm. can use it to survive maybe in the wild, mm-hmm. or you can use it to maybe do something bad. And it, it everything depends on how do you take the tool. For example, the phone. I try to limit myself from going on social media as much as possible because I know if I go in there, I'm going to waste a lot of time. Mm-hmm. And the time is the only limited resource that you have. You can get many millions of dollars, mm-hmm. billions of dollars, it doesn't matter. What what billionaires are doing nowadays? They're they're not wanting more money. What they're what they what they're wanting mainly it's more time. That's what that, that's what they strive for. They have so many people, so many assistants. They have an assistant for the assistant for the assistant <laughs> of the assistant, and all of that is just in a matter so that they are set up in the right manner so that they can save time and maybe enjoy more time with their family. Maybe invest that time into a new business. Maybe do whatever they whatever they want to do with their time but they understand this simple concept that this is the only limited resource that you have in this world and you cannot undo or, or go back into it mm-hmm. no i love that and it's true because again like people who are the most successful are delegating they're telling someone hey can you do this for me thank you can you do this for me can you do this for me i will compensate you with this 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 now these people are now creating this thing but the thing is, that's just that's, those aren't like minions. Those aren't just people that just do stuff for you. That's your team. And sometimes people forget. It's like to be a good leader, yeah. a good boss, right? You have to have <laughs> done all of those roles. Yeah. And I always think that something I'm, I'm really grateful about is that I was every one of those roles before. Like I tell people, I'm the editor. I'm the producer. I'm the designer. I'm the this. I'm, I make the thumbnail. I do this. I do yeah. my captions. I do. You do every single part yourself so that when you get the opportunity to delegate to people, you know exactly how it needs to be done. You can teach yeah. someone exactly how to do it. And that's the sweet part. And I think God in, in and of itself has taught me all the levels from start zero to this next level I'm at right now. And it's like, now I know how to do it from every regard. So if someone's like, hey, I can do this for you for this much, or I can do this for you for this, I can tell them, oh, okay, so are you going to do this, 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 this as well? Oh, so you know. Like, you know, you can't get you can't get played. You know, it's like, I understand the game, so you can't get yeah. played. And I think that's like a really sweet part about business too. It's like, be okay with learning a bunch of things in the business, right? You, the only thing I will say that, I, again, I don't know how to do is code, right? I'm not a coder. Yeah. And I've accepted that, that I wasn't someone who wanted to invest my time into coding. Yeah. So if I wasn't going to invest my time into coding, says my, uh, then I have to money. pay for it, right? Yeah. Okay, but then what else can I do to help where I don't have to pay for that anymore? Okay, then I found someone to design the logo for me. I'm not really a good artist. Okay, I, I found someone to help me with design. Okay, cool. Then I'm not a lawyer. How am I going to get a trademark? <laughs> how am I going to get a patent? I don't know. I'm not, yeah. I don't know how to deal with the USPTO office. Okay, yeah. so I found a lawyer. You just have to keep finding the person that needs to do something that you yourself cannot do because you will not be able to do every single part yourself. Yeah. And then once you find those people, put them in position. That's their position. That's their position. And I think about it, again, playing soccer all my life, it's a team. You have a midfielder. You have a left winger. You have the goalie. You have the center back. You have to find the people that can play that position the best. And you have to be okay with trusting that they're going to get their job done. 
And I think that's a really important part of business too, where you kind of have to just have trust. And again, having that trust in people and trust in yourself comes back in turn in trusting in God. That's that's really interesting that you say that. And delegation is a very e important part of business. So much that before I had struggles delegating so many tasks because I was like, oh, I am the best person at doing this. For what? Why, why am I going to get someone else to do it? And then I... Throughout the time and the lessons that God gave me through the struggles, I was able to comprehend, okay, you might be good at it, but there's someone else that can do it better than you or someone else that can do it 80% that is better than the 100% that you're going to be doing and wasting so much time on it. Yeah. Focusing, on, focusing on what's not really that important. The end goal is to be a leader of leaders. And, you know, it's something really interesting that catches my attention nowadays. For example, I work from home and... And I do not get the pleasure to, like, be interacting with people every single day. Mm -hmm. And when I do, I just hear some people. You you mentioned uh, bosses and leaders. Mm -hmm. I hate the word boss. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> I, just, I just hate it. Because it's like the, the relation that I have with that word nowadays, it's, it's, it's so weird. Because I hear people talking about, oh, my boss does this and this and that. And I'm like, wait, why are people that are in good positions in life treating other people like like shit mm -hmm. why it doesn't matter like something that my mom taught me since i was a kid and my dad is that treat every single person like they're the most important person in the world the janitor treat them the same way as the ceo it doesn't matter Everybody here in this world is the same. We're made out of, out of, out of skin mm -hmm. and blood. Mm -hmm. We all bleed. We all <laughs> we are gonna die yeah. someday. Mm -hmm. And you think just because you're in a certain position, somebody's less of a person than you? Mm -hmm. That doesn't make sense to me. And that's something that I am internalizing so much of just becoming the best leader as possible. Because if I want to make impact on life on people's life, I have to be the person. The type of person that people want to follow. Yeah. And that's something that I, that I struggled at, at the beginning because I was like, when you lack leadership, there are so many mistakes that you commit. At the beginning of my company, I was like, oh, why are these salespeople not making any sales? And I got to understand that if you truly want to be a leader, you have to hold yourself accountable. Mm -hmm. Ask your, instead of asking yourself, why are they not making this work? What am I doing incorrectly that this is not working? When you change that, you change the lens that you see the problems. And then you start seeing ways that you can implement so that you can fix that problem. And that's not longer a problem and you have a solution. And I'm internalizing so many ways on how to improve my leadership skills because it's like I am very in love with that with with with, with that skill set and and that's something that i am planning to improve today and very far years into the into the future because that's the only skill that it's a, that it is going to allow you to cast your vision in people and and have people going in the right direction as you are when people see me and i ask somebody to do something They know for a fact that I am willing to do that thing that I'm asking them 10 times the amount of times that I'm asking them. That's why I have so much of a great interaction with my team because my team knows that I am also willing to do it. I'm always willing to pair program with them and to collaborate with them. And, and I show them that I, am, that I am willing to put in that work that I am asking them to do. Mm -hmm. And that's why... We have so much of a great collaboration together. Every time, as I was saying earlier, mm -hmm. every time I'm going to take any important decisions on the team or in the business, I gather my team together and I, and I, and I, and I start a brainstorm section because I know if I am the only head, maybe I don't have the, the greatest idea in the world. Yeah. But if we are together inputting ideas on how to grow the business, what, what, which decision is the, the most important decision to take, maybe something great is going to come out, out of that conversation. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I am really internalizing on my business and on my life every single day. Mm -hmm. No, I love that. And it's really cool because when you said the whole thing about um, taking accountability, 
right? And I may not be the coder. I may not be the lawyer. I may not be this. But if I don't send my lawyer the information he needs and I don't sit down and make a 55-page document and send it to him, then it's never going to get filed. So I have to do a bunch of work to get it done. I can't sit there and say, oh, why don't? Why isn't my app launching yet? Why this? Why that? Because you haven't grown enough to become the person to be the leader of it. What if God is protecting you from something, right? So how can I improve myself? Oh, I haven't let go of some vices. I still do this really bad thing that makes me a bad person. Or I haven't improved myself as an individual. I'm still not this person. I'm still not this person. I still haven't mentally grown in this aspect yet. So take accountability, become better this way, this way, this way. Until you've done, like they call it like ducks in a row, right? Get all your things ready. Then you can start thinking, and then complain. Then try to complain. But I guarantee you, once you get everything done, watch how it comes to you. Then. You're not going to want to complain. Because <laughs> everything, because you've gotten the things done, ready to be the person needed to launch the company, to be ready. And I think it's so funny because when I started, again, I met you through a, a place where I'm pitching at an event. And I thought in my head, when I was pitching and talking to everyone and interacting, and in, in my heart, I was like, wow, I'm not nervous at all. I'm just talking about something I've been doing for four years. That's it. You know, I wasn't nervous. I was just talking to everyone. And everyone really felt really – I can tell a lot of people liked liked it. So much so that the next week when I was in another event, someone came up to me and was like, hey, you uh, were presenting last week, right, at that other place? I'm like, yeah. She's like, I really loved your your idea. Your pitch was awesome. Like, I would love to get your card information. I would love to use your app when it launches. And it was like you almost feel a little like a little celebrity. You're like, you're like oh, you, you recognize me? Like, it, was, it was nice. It was nice to hear that. I'm Mark Super Zuckerberg over here. <laughs> yeah. And it was, it was just one of those moments where you're like, you're so grateful. And I was like, oh, alhamdulillah. I was so grateful for that moment because I was like, wow. Like someone recognized me, noticed me, and was able to be like, hey, I really like what you're doing. I would love to connect with you. And I was thinking, was I ready for this feeling two years ago? Even though I, I wasn't. And even though I wanted to be, was yeah. I? But I had to go through life. I had to learn skills. I had to become a better person to get and get the blessing that I think I deserve. Right? Yeah. And like you were saying, like you ask God, God, can I get a marker? Can I get a marker? And he just sends you a pencil. God, I want a marker. I want a marker. Right? <laughs> but then he gives you a pencil again. Right? You just see pencils all around you. If you're not even using the pencil, why would God give you the marker? Right? Use what you have at the disposal of your life, the opportunity. And in that same book that said 10,000 hours to become an expert, it says the number one thing basically that I read, learned in that book was opportunity is what allows people to become successful. Nothing else. Opportunity and resources. And like you said, resources, right? Yeah. That's what makes you successful. Because if you don't have the opportunity nor the resource, you can work so hard and you're not going to have the ability. So that's kind of, again, like what I wanted to end with you there. And opportunity also has to come with preparation. Mm -hmm. Because success is a mixture of both. If you are offered a billion-dollar opportunity today, mm -hmm. maybe you are ready to take it, but maybe you're not. Maybe you haven't developed the skill set for you to be able to take that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And that's... That's why God put, puts us to struggle because he makes us develop all of the skills that we need in order to meet this opportunity. Once we are prepared with all of the skill set, all of the life experiences that we have to have in order to, for, to have a, the mental toughness to be able to go through every single ups and downs that you're going to go with this opportunity, then it's going to meet together and that's when you meet success. When you... Like you said, do all the things that you need to get done, right? To then get the reward. So you have to do all those things to then, boom, now I have it. Yes. And like you, you were saying earlier, oh, maybe maybe after you get the thing, maybe you complain. But if you internalize leadership, you're never going to complain. Mm -hmm. your, your personality is not going to fit into the type of person that complains about things. Mm -hmm. You're the type of person that thinks about something and gets it done. And... That's something that I am really internalizing on my lifestyle every single day. I do not bring any single problem or say it out of my mouth without a solution. Because mm -hmm. if I just speak about a problem and I'm not bringing solutions, I'm making that problem even powerful. Mm -hmm. And and he says it on the Bible, whatever you say through your mouth, it's powerful. What this is this is one of the most powerful weapons that God gave us. Mm -hmm. And if we use it the wrong way, Making stuff that are negative even more powerful, 
we're messing ourselves up. We're self-sabotaging. Mm -hmm. But if you instead talk about a problem just to provide a solution for it, then you're 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 solving the puzzle. Yeah. You're 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 doing something positive for yourself. And when, whenever you speak, for example, there are so many people that complain and complain about their life, complain about every single thing of their life. And I'm like, they're never wow, going to be happy. You're not like that's what you're calling for yourself. Yeah. Whenever you t you say something negative, that's what you're calling for yourself. That's why I have a rule. I do not say anything negative that could affect my subconscious into thinking negatively about me. Yeah. I'm not going to say anything negative that will affect my subconscious to think that that goal is not possible. Every single thing that I'm going to say through my mouth is going to be in a positive way. And I have so many friends that they got mad at me because I'm like, bro, why are you saying that? Don't say that. Mm -hmm. Don't say that in front of me, at least. Why, yeah, why, why I tell you? all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Don't say that in front of me, at least. They're, they're complaining about their life and everything else. I'm like, no, this, that's what you're calling for yourself. You can call me crazy. But I have a belief where it's like whatever you focus the most, that's what you're going to be getting. You attract that energy. Yes. Yeah, so if I if I say something, oh, I'm going to accomplish this and this and this, and I say it out loud every single day, reminding myself that I am going to get that goal and there's nothing in this world that will stop me from getting it. If you internalize that, yeah, <laughs> there's no stop. You become you become unstoppable <laughs> mentally. Yeah, you, it's, it's it's the mental toughness that, that that it brings you. If you if you if you focus on all the negative it's never it's the negative is never gonna gonna end but if you focus on the positive everything's gonna flourish i love that i love that denzel so the way i always like end the podcast i always ask like two separate questions and i always uh the first one i ask is what is your most unpopular opinion <sighs> i hate cold coffee <laughs> 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 man <laughs> like in the dominican republic I never having cold coffee was such a unheard idea. Mm -hmm. Like it's a hot coffee. It's always warm. It's hot always coffee. hot coffee. My 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 grandma. She she was she was an old lady. My my great grandma and she, oh she always cooks the coffee in 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 this little machine that it's it's not a machine. It's like you just put it on fire. You put the what's it the called coffee. in Spanish? What's it called in Spanish? La Greca. La Greca. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's like. That was my main idea of a coffee. And then mm -hmm. I, I come here into the States, and I'm like, oh, wait. Somebody ordered a, a cold coffee. I'm like, cold coffee? Let me try it. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, why not? <laughs> then I go and try it. I'm like, this is not coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so... That, that that that's a, a very unpopular opinion because it's like everybody here is adapted to like yeah they love latte, uh, ice, ice ice coffee ice coffee ice yeah coffee. ice coffee and I'm like I don't like it yeah <laughs> I will say I try I, my thing is like I was never like a big coffee person but I think the older I got I was like you know let me let me try it out because you know it does give you a little boost to your day a little caffeine yeah. doesn't hurt and again being Egyptian tea. Black tea. They yeah. they are in love with black tea. After your meal, y'all hanging out, have a little like little pastry, a little something sweet, little together. Sit, sip on some black tea together, talk and just you know chat, right? Such yeah. a, like an Egyptian casual thing to do after, right? But then I was like, All right, let me try coffee. I'm doing a little sipping black coffee. I'm like, yeah, it's good. It's just a little bitter, but I don't like sugar in my stuff because you know it's like yeah. I don't like the extraness. So I'm like, all right, let me put a little bit of milk with this, and that's that's it. And I was like, you know, what? I like the warmness. It feels nice. It's like it feels like a hug. You know, like a black coffee feels like a hug. It a boosts black, you. A black hot coffee <laughs> <laughs> feels so great. You know, waking up in the morning. Well, this is my routine. I wake up in the morning, five a.m. 4 a.m., go run a four mile, and then come back home and just get that black coffee. With, I, 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 do, I do use sugar, so that black coffee with a little bit of sugar, boom, boom. When I'm, like, getting me in my desk that I say that first thing, that first sip of coffee, it's like, oh. Yes. Oh gosh, <laughs> this is what I needed. Let's go. <laughs> I'm going to destroy the world today. Yeah. Cuz you it's like such like a uh, again it's like such like a jolt of energy too. You yeah. feel it. It's warm. It feels good and I do agree like I I had I was having iced coffee recently like trying yeah. it out and stuff like you were saying like oh, yeah, let me try. I got to really get it often. But then I started going I went back to hot coffee. I'm like Tch. 
why don't I even try like <laughs> co- co- call like this is way better than what they were thinking. <laughs> it's like in the dream. <laughs> yeah. No, I get you completely. And then I always ask like what's a word you want to learn in Arabic? And the word you said was um God bless, God bless you. And I thought that was awesome. Yeah. And it's funny cuz when we sneeze, uh, okay, and like culturally as well in Islam, it's yeah. like a chill. So you say alhamdulillah. So alhamdulillah just means thank God. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Cuz ilah ilah like Transits to Allah, like yeah. Allah just means God, right? Yeah. So Alhamd, yeah, Alhamdulillah, is Alhamdulillah. Ha- yeah. So it's just saying like thank God, right? Yeah. And then, if like if you were to see and say Alhamdulillah, then I would say Yarhamuk. So Yarhamuk Allah. Allah. Yarhamuk Allah. Yarhamuk Allah. So it's like you know what I mean. So then that's the response back, you know? Yeah. So it's cool. Like, that's kind of how it is. Like you know, it's like it's like a res- calm response to people. Okay. Cause, and it's cool because someone said that it's like when you sneeze, like your heart like stops. So it's like, alhamdulillah. It's like, thank God. Like, you know, I'm good. Like, but it's like, again, it, sometimes, like, I remember, but someone said, like, sometimes when you smoke, like, you remember to breathe. Cause, like, you're breathing it in. Like, it's like you said, that first sip of coffee. Remember, like, how yeah. that jolt, it's like that hit of dopamine. Yeah. But sometimes it's like a reminder. I think that's like the really cool part about, like, that greeting. And then I know in Spanish, it's like, salud. Right? Yeah. Salud is like, salud. Salud. It's salud. Like, good health. Yeah. Right? So it's again, like, it's like a blessing, you know, in a way where you're talking, yeah. like, stay, stay healthy, like, make sure you stay healthy. Uh, so it's cool to see, like, culturally, too, like, how similar it is in different cultures, regions, and religions. And even in English, you have bless you. Yeah. People t- took God out of it. Yeah. <laughs> and they just say bless you. But I think, uh, that's just my idea. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I don't know if it's true or not. I think it started with God bless you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I always say, like, and I was funny when I was younger, I always felt like, uh, I would sneeze and like no one would say anything. But every time someone sneezes, I'm like, oh, God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> then I like stop saying it completely. I'm like, no, I'm not saying this. Because <laughs> I would sneeze and I'd be like, I'm like. <laughs> and you know, I, I love learning how to say God bless you in different languages. For example, I had a person on my team, uh, Sarosh, which I am really, I, 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 lo- I, I love working with that guy. Mm-hmm. Um, he taught me in Pakistani. Mm-hmm. It's. Alab kabarakare. It's like God bless you as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, and, I love and, that. Yeah. Because <laughs> they speak Urdu. They, they speak Urdu. So, like, in Urdu, like, they'll be able to, like, again, it's a lot of um people that in my mosque, a lot of them are Pakistani as well. Yeah. So, it's cool to see, like, hear, listen to different words and stuff and how they use this <laughs> stuff too. So, that's awesome. So, one of the last things I always ask you, obviously, is, like, what is one of your favorite quotes? And I would love for you to share, like, again, your favorite quote. Yeah. It's by Steve Jobs. And it goes somewhere along the lines of, we hire smart people to tell us what to do, not for us to tell them what to do because they're smart. Yeah. <laughs> they're proficient in their area. Mm-hmm. They became an expert. All of this year that I became an expert at coding, somebody else became an expert maybe at marketing. Yeah. So why am I going to hire someone that is an expert on marketing and tell them how to do their job? Yeah. No, you do your job. <laughs> yeah. You tell me what do I need to do better for me to make your life easier. Yeah. And that's something that that I, that I am really internalizing this year. No, I love that. And again, Denzel, I really do appreciate you again making your way to the podcast here. Again, it's been an awesome conversation and just hearing your story again from being an immigrant, learning how to code, since, thinking about it since you were 11, 12 years old, thinking I want to have a company when I'm older the opportunity at a barbershop and then how you use God to be part of your life so intently is incredible. So I just want to like, thank you again for coming onto the podcast here and stepping into the journey here with me. Thank you very much, Ali, for having me. Of course, bro. And God bless you. you. So thank you guys again for tuning in to another episode of the Oli Cannoli show. So again, today we had Denzel again, super intelligent man. And it's so awesome to hear such an intense and brilliant story from him. So again, please leave a bunch of friendly comments down below for him. And if you guys want to be on the podcast as well, please, Feel free to apply in the link down below. You'll see it. Apply to it. I would love to learn about your story. And if you want to be here where Denzel's sitting right there, again, feel free to apply. So thank you guys again for tuning in to another episode of The Oli Cannoli Show. And I'll see you guys next time.